My name is Carol Roberts, and I am a PBC patient diagnosed back in 1999, became a member of the PBC Sears organization shortly after that, and got more and more involved as the years went on. During that time, I became very close friends with the founder, Lenny Moore, and she had asked me that as her health declined, if I would take over the organization. So in 2020, she passed away from pancreatic cancer, and I assumed the presidency of the organization. At the same time, my liver that had lasted for 25 years in cirrhosis decided it was time to fail. And I had it into a liver transplant in the middle of COVID. I received my new liver um, in May of 2021, and it has been doing wonderfully since then. The organization began as a support group online for people with PBC back in 1996 uh, when Lenny was diagnosed and went online trying to find other people and more information because the information she did find was very doomsday. She met three people and from that three people turned into a larger organization. The main focus still remains on support but we also get involved in um, education and research. And with the uh, current climate in uh, the PBC, we have taken on helping to educate our members to the facts of needing to participate in research clinical trials um, in order to further the treatment for our illness. We also raise funds. We have online support groups through Facebook. We have email digests. And then we hold um, conferences for the patients every other year, which um, we bring in the top experts from in the PBC field. And the patients get to interact with them and learn from them and realize that they're, they're wonderful people who are working for our benefit and, and really are truly involved in trying to help. It is an autoimmune disease that the thinking is, because there is no no cause or cure, that it, we are genetically predisposed to have PBC and then either an environmental or a viral trigger will put it into action. The two most burdensome are the fatigue and the itch. We all suffer from the fatigue, some more than others, and a good majority suffer from the itch, and those that do suffer greatly from this itch. I know from personal experience, I had itch before I was diagnosed that was I had no idea why. And Finally, it made sense after I was diagnosed what this was, but it's hard to explain the normal person will hear that you itch and they think about the itch from a bug bite or the itch from poison ivy. The difference is that it is under the skin. There's nothing you can do if you can put a whole bottle of cream on and it is not going to do anything to relieve that. It's just in your skin and the more you itch, scratch at it, the more it itches. I was so would try so hard to gently just rub it, touch it, and I it would bruise. It was it looked like I'd been in a car accident because my legs were so bruised from itching. I don't know why, but it miraculously disappeared after about five years. <laughs> and it never came back and I was very happy, but unfortunately most people don't have that experience. So We all have our, our varieties of what we try. Um, there are those who say that the, the lotions and creams will help them. Um, there's others that swear they have to not eat certain foods that that tends to aggravate their itch. My solution was always, I would take a bath and soak in really cool water and then try to fall asleep as fast as I could before I would start itching. But it, during the daytime, I would put a cold pack on it because cold seemed to help. Some swear by a frozen bag of peas because you can keep refreezing them. Of course, you'll never eat them, but um, pull it out because it kind of conforms to the area where you're itching. 
So those that live in cooler climates sometimes have it a little easier because the, the itch when you're hot or sweaty seems to be worse. The most important thing that I hear most patients say is that physicians, a lot of them seem to feel that the, the symptoms are worse as your disease progresses. And they need to understand that those symptoms have nothing to do with what stage of the disease you're at. There are patients that are in the late stages that don't suffer from the symptoms. And there are people in the early stages that have the worst itching you can imagine. It's not directly related to how far along you are in the disease. It is just a symptom and it comes when it comes. The very first thing I give to new patients is to tell them to breathe. It's an awful thing to be told um, about this disease. It scares the heck out of you. And then you have to take the time to go through accepting it and then start looking at how to take care of the symptoms, um, develop a very good relationship with your, phys your treating physician because they will become your partner and just really you end up having to adjust to your new normal and then live your life. It's for most, it's a very slow progressing disease. So you deal with the symptoms and keep your lab works up, keep your doctor visits, you know, on schedule and go ahead and you will be treating it for a long time. I'm very happy to have seen the two recently approved uh, medicines as an option because we really don't know the cause of it. We don't, we could all have a different trigger. Many of us will need different treatments based on our personal medical history. If a person has several, you know, autoimmune diseases, which tends to happen, um, they may need a different treatment than say I did when I only had one autoimmune disease. I'm very excited about the um, trials that are going on to help relieve the itch. I once told someone that if they could uh, find the, the solution to this itch, we would build them a monument. <laughs> but I'm also excited there is um, several looking at what I would consider closest to a cure is um, there's a new antigen where they're aiming to reset the immune system. And that one excites me a lot. There is excitement with the new medicines, but there are a lot of people who have been diagnosed for quite a while, myself included in that, um, that are reaching where they need the transplant. These new medicines are not tested and probably will not be prescribed for people in the late stages. So we just, whenever there's articles put out, we always like to make sure they're not ignoring those people.